of all the different programs that are available today to help people to get clean and sober from all kinds of addictions, whether it's the substances or addictions to thoughts or addictions to behaviors, 12-step um, groups, 12-step support groups, 12-step meetings are probably some of the most famous and some of the most successful options for people that want to get clean. And when we talk about clean, we're talking about clean from addictions to negative thought, to codependency, to obsessive um, food consumption, to alcoholism, to nicotine, to sexual addiction, etc. There are so many different support groups out there that are amazing, just amazing. And I wanted today to talk about the upside and, yes, the downside of 12-step support groups. Hi, I'm David Essel. For 20-something years, I've helped people to get sober. I'm in sobriety myself and recovery from for several different types of addictions, which I am very, very happy to say to you today that I'm clean and sober. And a good portion of it and my help of people to stay on path has been getting them into support groups, especially in the initial stages of their sobriety, from any of the thoughts that are obsessive or the behaviors that are harmful or the substances that are harmful in life. Uh, I find support groups to be amazing, to be able to go into a room and to sit down with other people who are admitting in a public space, confined and private, but in a public space that they've struggled with these things is awesome. As a matter of fact, most of us in the beginning will shy away from support groups. Um, Alcoholic, Alcoholics Anonymous, Al-Anon, Nicotine Anonymous, Narcotics Anonymous, Overeaters Anonymous, um, the Sexual Addiction Anonymous groups. We'll, we'll shy away from them because we don't want to admit to others that we are powerless over these thoughts, substances, or behaviors. So one of the cool things about 12-step groups is that it's a chance for us to break out to be vulnerable, to be honest, and to be in an environment with other people who are working through the same issues. And also, I think that the, 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 the benefits are unbelievable. I remember that in my early stages of sobriety, I was actually encouraging people to go to all these groups, and I myself wasn't. And once I got into them and went for about 110, 120 straight days, I forget what it was, to get my grounding and foundation, it was imperative for my ongoing sobriety. And I think it is for everyone early in recovery, absolutely. So those are the benefits. We have the support structure. We have people that can hold us accountable. When we don't show up the next day or a week later, people are coming up to you and saying, how are you doing? Are you okay? We missed you. I mean, the feeling, the family-like feeling is incredible. But to every yin, there's a yang. To every good, there's a challenge. And some of the challenges of 12-step groups are very, very serious. And, and in our brand new addiction recovery certification workshop that we do, it's called Holistic Addiction Recovery Certification. Um, we take people through, parents, um, addiction counselors, coaches, ministers, teachers, we take them through a very strong foundation of how to create a holistic addiction recovery program for themselves, for their kids, or for the individuals, their clients that they work with. And one of the things we say is that with all the benefits of 12-step recovery group, there are some challenges that we want to be aware of. Number one is cross-addiction. Some people turn into, they use the support groups as an addictive process, which is highly normal. In other words, that they'll, they'll miss family functions, they'll miss exercise, they'll miss some other really important social interactions. Some people will miss work functions because they feel addicted to the 12-step support groups. Obviously, that's not healthy. Um, there are many ways if people have to miss meetings that they can connect with a sponsor or connect with someone from the meetings and talk to them over the phone, um, but not miss. As a matter of fact, there was a client that I worked with whose family broke up because of the fact that he refused to do functions when he could go to a support group. He refused to do family functions, which is a sign of addiction. So cross-addiction with 12-step groups is very a very positive, uh, or I should say a very strong possibility, and we want to be aware of that. If we are um, shunning other responsibilities, if we're isolating, and that's another powerful problem that we have with 12-step groups is the support groups, is people start to isolate within the group. In other words, that they don't hang out with people that aren't part of that core. And there's another addictive quality of them, is that we'll isolate within the group, is that if someone comes to you and starts sharing information or news about other addiction recovery programs, that individuals will say, well, if it's not 12-step, it's not worthwhile. 
And so all of a sudden we start isolating within the 12 step group, which is not a healthy occurrence. As a matter of fact, what we've found in 20 years of doing the work is that the 12 step group should be a part of your ongoing recovery, but to make your recovery even more powerful, and a lot of people may not agree with me here, is that you have to get outside of 12 step. You have to actually look for all these other alternative type of organizations and therapies and thought processes to stay healthy, not to get into a rut, not to get into cross addiction. The other challenge with 12 step groups from our perspective, and we've done some other videos like this on YouTube, is that people can get caught up in the terminology. They can feel guilty if they don't open up their mouth and say, hi, I'm David and I'm an alcoholic. We don't believe in that. With our holistic recovery program, we don't believe in the use of the words, uh, I'm an alcoholic or I'm a sex addict or, um, or I'm addicted to whatever it might be, unless you're actually still using. But once you stop using and you're attending a recovery program, what we say from a holistic point of view is the words need to change. The words need to be something similar to, um, you know, hi, I'm David and I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic or addict or whatever it might be. Um, to go a step further, you might even say, hi, I'm David and I'm in grateful recovery. I'm, I'm, I have gratitude for my recovery program. And you start dropping the end words, the alcoholic, the addict, the codependent, the sex addict. We start dropping those those labels and those names. And the reason we do it is for a really healthy purpose actually. When you're in recovery and you're in a strong recovery process and you're not using whatever the use is, whatever the substance, the thought or the behavior, when you've stopped using it, then we want the mind and the subconscious to start understanding that we are in recovery. So I'm, a, I'm in grateful recovery, end of statement. I'm in recovery end of statement. We don't have to go on and use those other words. So the benefits of 12-step are unbelievable. Uh, in our recovery program, our holistic addiction recovery program that we teach for all these different types of people, we're going to be supporting the 12-step community. We're going to be encouraging people to get involved because the benefits are outrageous. But we're also going to say, as with anything else, you know, like exercise is really good. Too much exercise isn't really good. And the same thing with 12-step. 12-step meetings are awesome, especially in the beginning of a program. They're incredible. But if we cross-addict into 12-step, or we cross-addict into the terminology, or we cross-addict and we have sponsors that are constantly giving advice and telling us what to do versus asking us questions, which is another downfall of 12-step programs, is when the sponsors start, we start to put them on a pedestal and treat them some, in some godlike fashion. And whatever they say we do, and whenever we don't do what they tell us, we feel guilty. That's, that's not a healthy relationship. As a matter of fact, everyone knows that's called codependency. So let's look at the reality. Let's start broadening our mindset. Let's make sure we're not cross-addicting, make sure we're not using terminology that keeps us living our story in the past. The last thing I'm going to say is exactly that as well. When you're attending 12-step meetings, is if you're constantly talking about your past story, when you were an addict or your behavior was, was getting you into trouble, your thought process was getting you into trouble, if you're constantly telling those stories, you're living in the past. And the chance to truly heal is minimized. So let's work really smart. If I can help you with any of this, 20 years now of doing this type of work, contact me at talkdavid.com. If you want to check out our addiction recovery program, you can right there. And you can also look at lifecoachuniverse.com, which has a full-blown description of our program. Share this with people that are struggling with recovery because these words might be exactly what they need to hear. Here, and don't forget to sign up at YouTube so that every new video we do, goes right to your YouTube account and stay on your path. Wishing you the best in your sobriety or your children or your family, whatever you're doing in the world of sobriety, I'm wishing you the best. I'm David Essel. Have an awesome day.